Recovery Delegation implements security by limiting access to web management website features and data. This is based on the user roles via the Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. This empowers administrators to delegate permissions in a very granular way on an as-needed basis to the individuals who will be completing the restore process. You can also create custom roles with an account of your choosing. Make sure that the Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager service account has sufficient rights to enumerate Active Directory domains if you want to assign roles to Active Directory domain users and or groups. Let's take a look at a demonstration. First, we need to log into the Enterprise Manager as an administrative user. In this example, the Enterprise Manager will be configured using the default port 9443. Because I'm logged in as an administrative user, I have access and visibility into the entire environment. This includes dashboard, run reports, and even do job maintenance activities. Even full VM recoveries being backed up by any connected Veeam backup server. We can even recover individual guest files. This is a great feature when you're trying to just recover a small piece of information. You can even do application item recovery for Exchange, SQL, and even Oracle. To provide users access to these features, we need to add them as a delegated user. Let's go into Configuration and add them in the Roles menu. This will take just a moment, and now we see the interface and we select Roles. After we see the users enumerated, we can go to the top and select Add, and here's where we can add a user. In the Add Role menu, as we zoom in, you'll see under Account Type, we can select User or a group of users. We're going to just select at this time a user. After we've inputted the username, then we can go to Roles and select which role we would like them to have. We can make them a portal administrator, similar to the account that we are using to do this demonstration. We can make them a portal user who would have the ability to see and do recoveries, but not be able to change configuration. The last option is Restore Operator, which we're going to use for this demonstration. With the Restore Operator role chosen, an administrator can use the Selected Machines Only option to limit this user to a specific scope of virtual machines. These scopes could be pulling from Hyper-V, vSphere, vCloud Director, and protection groups which manage the agent deployment to specific systems. For this example, we're going to use vSphere objects. So we select the vSphere object option. This opens up Add Objects menu. We're going to select VMs and templates. And from here, we can expand the menu and be able to select from a scope of different virtual machines. Once expanded, we give this user the ability to restore by selecting the folders which contain the VMs we want to give them permission to. These two folders and the virtual machines within them will be the only objects this user will be able to restore. All other objects will be restricted. The next step will be the granularity in which we allow them to restore these objects. We could do an entire virtual machine or even down to the guest files. When we select guest files, we're presented two additional options. One is allow in-place file restores only. This means only to their original location and not to be restored in a separate folder. The other option is allow restore of files with these extensions only. This means I could allow the recovery of PowerPoint or Excel files, but limit the recovery of executables or other system files. I can also give them the ability to restore exchange items or database items, and by selecting databases, I could even remove Oracle and limit them to only SQL Server databases. The third option under databases is deny in-place database restores. This will prevent somebody from inputting information into a live or production database and possibly causing corruption or even an outage. It will, however, let you connect to those databases and restore information to a different location. We press OK, give it a moment, and when we look at the list, now we see that this user has been created. Now we'll sign out the current user, and then we'll log in with the user we just created to ensure those permissions have been seated properly. Once we log in with the newly added user, if we look up in the upper left-hand corner, we'll notice less options than we saw with the full admin logged in. This user is currently limited to file recovery and application item recovery. We currently have files selected, but we could easily click on items 
to see application item information. Let's go back to the Files menu and select Pick from List. This will show us the virtual machines that we now have access to based on the permission that we were provided. This user is a database admin, so we're going to use that as an example for this demonstration. They will first select the restore point that they want to recover from, in this example the latest restore point, and then expand to go to the scripts directory to be able to recover one of the scripts. Once we select the script, the first thing we'll notice is the download option is grayed out. That's because we restricted their ability to restore to a different location earlier in our demonstration. They can add this to a list of files to be restored later, or even check the history. When restoring, they could choose to overwrite the original or keep the original and place this as a copy to be used at a later time. We'll select Overwrite to restore it back to its original location. And now we see the guest file recovered to the location that we requested. Let's move on to application items. You'll see this user can only see SQL database information. That's because we removed the Exchange and Oracle options earlier in the demonstration. From the Pick from List menu, we can now select the SQL Server that we want to work with. We can now choose the specific database, and on the right, we can choose the restore point. Once a restore point is selected, we can then choose our point in time of recovery. The only restore option this user is presented is the alternative location option. So now we'll go down and select restore. To access information in this database, they will need to bind to it by providing target server and target database information. We're going to cancel out of this for now, and that should conclude the demonstration. Thank you.